ship is retired from service, but not to be scrapped, it will usually become a museum ship and be permanently moored at a port, and either be converted into a floating hotel or museum. This is what happened to these ships. There are 10 classic ocean liners that still exist today. Number 10. The SS Lane Victory Upon entering service near the end of the Second World War, the SS Lane Victory was one of the dozens of Victory class cargo ships built. And just like the Lane Victory, some of those other Victory class cargo ships still exist today as museum ships. I would add a few more of those ships to this list, but they would take up most of the list. So that's why I'm just going with the Lane Victory. Anyway, on her maiden voyage in June 1945, she was ordered, tr ordered to transport war supplies across the Pacific. In 1948, after the war ended, the ship was laid up in Suisun Bay, California, until 1950 when she was ordered to evacuate civilians from Korea during the Korean War. In 1953, she was once again laid up in Suisun Bay, California, and in 1966, the ship was called in for war service during the Vietnam War. In 1988, the ship was turned over to some United States Merchant Navy veterans who then spent three years destroying the vessel. In 1994, the ship was towed to Los Angeles, California to become a, flo a floating maritime museum. And that's where she currently sits today. She had a long career serving in the final year of the Second World War, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Number 9. The NS Savannah When she entered service in 1962, she was the first nuclear passenger ship ever to be constructed, and ended up becoming one of only four nuclear passenger vessels to ever be built. On the inside, she was a normal passenger vessel, but the ship was actually powered by a nuclear reactor. So basically, the world was afraid of this ship. In 2006, work had begun on converting the Savannah into a museum ship. Then in 2007, the ship was towed to Newport News, then to Baltimore, where she currently sits today as a museum ship. On the ship that the world was afraid of sits quietly at the docks at Baltimore, Maryland. Number 8. MV Funshaw Now this is the first real ocean liner on this list, because of course, the Savannah was a nuclear merchant ship, not an ocean liner. The Funshaw was built for the Portuguese Insula Navigation Company in 1961. She continued to operate as an ocean liner until 1984, when she joined the International Cruises Fleet. In 2013, the ship was purchased by Portuscale Cruise Lines, when she was then towed to Gothenburg, Sweden, to be converted into a new cruise ship, until 2018, when she was brought back to Gothenburg to become a floating hotel, which is the first ship on this list that was actually converted into a floating hotel. Number 7. The SS Nomadic a lot of us are familiar with the SS Nomadic, which was one of the tender boats that took passengers to the RMS Titanic from Cherbourg, France. She and her sister ship, the SS Traffic, were built because in 1907, the International Mercantile Marine Company had convinced the White Star Line to operate some of their ships out of Southampton instead of Liverpool, so they could service the port of Cherbourg, France. But there was a problem with that. The port of Cherbourg was, too, was so shallow that large ocean liners were unable to dock there. Originally, the White Star Line intended to have their tender Gallic ferried the passenger set from Sh the Cherbourg dock onto their liners. However, when the White Star Line was designing the Olympic class of liners, it was clear that the Gallic would need to be replaced. The architects at the Harland and Wolf shipyard then started to design two new tender ships, and those would eventually become the SS Nomadic and the SS Traffic. Shortly after the, the Nomadic and the Traffic entered service in 1911, the Gallic was laid up in Liverpool until she would eventually be scrapped in 1914. The first duty of the SS Nomadic and the SS Traffic occurred in June 1911, when the RMS Olympic arrived in Cherbourg, France for the first leg of her maiden voyage. Then both tenders took care of ferrying passengers onto the Olympic. Then in April 1912, when the RMS Titanic arrived in Cherbourg, France for the first leg of her maiden voyage, the Nomadic and the Traffic did the same, ferrying passengers between the Cherbourg docks and the Titanic. And over the next two years or so, Nomadic and Traffic continued to transport passengers onto White Star Line ships like the Olympic. Until the First World War started in August of 1914, when many transatlantic crossings were cancelled. In April 1917, nomadic and traffic were requisitioned by the French Navy and sent to saint nazaire France to become minesweepers. But after the war, she and the traffic started to ferry passengers onto any ship that came to Cherbourg, France and would not just serve White Star Liners. In 1934, after the White Star Line merged with their old rival the Cunard Line, she was towed to the Cherbourg Tow and Rescue Society and renamed Ingenieur Minard, and served in the Cherbourg evacuation in June 1940 during the Second World War. After the war and throughout the 1950s and 60s, she continued to serve 
the port of Cherbourg, France, and large ocean liners like the RMS Queen Mary and the RMS Queen Elizabeth. But in November 1968, she was finally pulled from service and laid up in Cherbourg, but she, then she was towed to Le Havre. And in 1974, she was brought to the Seine River in Paris. Then in 2006, the, the nomadic was brought to her original city of birth, Belfast, Ireland. And that's where she currently sits today. It's fascinating that the nomadic actually does still exist today and in great preservation, given that she was built back in 1911. She had a long and successful, she had a long and successful career, and it's the only White Star Line vessel that still exists today. Number 6. The Juliennes The Juliennes is a retired Portuguese hospital ship moored at Viana do Castelo, Portugal. It was built in 1955 to replace another ship also called the Juliennes. She entered service in 1955 as a hospital ship, but also served as a tug, icebreaker, and supply ship several times throughout her career. In 1973, the Juliennes was pulled from service and laid up in Lisbon, intended to be scrapped, and started to rot. But in September of 1997, TV presenter and historian Jose Hermano Sareva started a campaign to save the vessel from going to the scrapyard. I don't know if it's still time to save the Gilianes. I know that I'm talking about the end of September, it's two days left, but in two days it can save this navio. E era com estas palavras que eu queria acabar. Bem, sei que é tarde, mas mais vale tarde que nunca. And thanks to the campaign that Jose Hermana Sareva did, the Juliennes was saved from the scrapyard and restored, and restored, and permanently moored at Viana do Castelo, Portugal. If it weren't for that campaign, this vessel wouldn't be on this list. Number five, the SS Kiwaden. So far, this is the oldest ship on this list and the Kiwaden is actually the closest one to me. Anyway, the SS Kiwaden is a Canadian steamship that, at the time of recording this video, is docked at Port McNicoll, Ontario, Canada. But they are planning to move her down to Kingston, Ontario, which is very close to the border of Canada and New York State, which is very close to where I live. And the SS Kiwaden is the only steamship of her kind that still exists today. She was built for the Canadian Pacific Steamship Company in 1907 for the the Canadian Pacific Railway Continental Route. She made her main voyage on September 14, 1907 from Levis, Quebec to Owen Sound, Ontario. Over the next several decades, the Kiwaden had a long and successful career up until 1965 when the ship was intended to be scrapped. But in 1967, she was purchased by Roland J. Peterson and moored at Douglas, Michigan, up until 2011 when she was purchased by Skyline International Developments Incorporated, and was permanently moored at her home of Pic Port McNicoll, Ontario. But at the beginning of this year, the ship was donated to the Maritime Museum of the Great Lakes in Kingston, Ontario, and the ship is planned to be there this fall. And the Kiwanin was used several times for exterior shots of films and documentaries, such as subjects about the Lusitania, Titanic, Yarmouth Castle, and even the Empress of Ireland. My family is planning to go visit the Kiwanin when it gets to Kingston, but as of now, the ship currently sits in Port McNicoll, Ontario. Number 4. The RMS Queen Elizabeth II. While she is more of a floating hotel than a museum ship, she still offers history tours on board, so I thought I should add the Kiwi II. A lot of us are familiar with the Kiwi II. She was built in 1968 to replace the aging Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. I talked about the Kiwi II in my Top 10 Ocean Ladders video, so make sure you go and watch that when you have a chance. For this, we are just going to talk about the vessel's final years, more specifically between the 1990s and 2008, and her retirement in 2008. In August of 1992, while the QE2 was sailing past Cuddy Hunk Island off the coast of Massachusetts, she ran aground on an unchartered shoal, which damaged most of the bottom of the ship. But luckily, the ship was able to be repaired and put back into service. In September of 1995, while the vessel was bound for New York, about 200 miles or 320 kilometers south of Newfoundland, she ran right into Hurricane Lewis. And in the early morning of September 11th, her captain spotted a rogue wave about 90 feet or 27 meters high. The wave washed over the bow of the ship and crashed into the superstructure and did damage to her bow section. But luckily, no one was injured during this encounter. In 1998, the Cunard Line was acquired by the Carnival Corporation, and a year later, in 1999, she was given a refurbishment. In 2004, Cunard introduced a new ocean liner to their fleet, the Queen Mary II which succeeded the QE2 in size as the flagship of the company. 
But in 2006, she took the record of the longest career of a Cunard Express liner from the RMS Aquitania. At the time, she was 37 years old. More than the longest Cunard career of a Cunard Express liner was held by the RMS Aquitania, who was retired after 36 years of service. Finally, after nearly 40 years of service in October 2008, Huey 2 made her last departure from New York City bound for Dubai. She had been purchased by the Nakheel Properties of Dubai and would become a floating hotel. On November 26, 2008, the QE2 arrived in Dubai for her retirement, where she was moored at the Palm Jumeirah Artificial Islands, which is where she sits today. Number 6. The SS Great Britain Now this is the oldest museum ship I put on this list, and it's probably one of the oldest museum ships in existence. She was built for the Great Western Steamship Company in 1843 and made her maiden voyage in July 1845, crossing the Atlantic in a little over two weeks. Over the next several decades, she continued to do transatlantic crossings to America and even crossings to Australia. In 1882, the Great Britain was converted into a bulk coal transport ship, and she continued to transport coal up until 1886 when a fire broke out and ran aground at the Falkland Islands. Later, she was sold to the Falkland Islands Company and used as a giant coal bunker up until 1937 where she was towed to Sparrow Cove and left abandoned. She stayed there up until 1970 when a German tug went to the area where the ship was located at and was brought to her original home port, Bristol, England, to become a museum ship. It's incredible that the Great Britain is in remarkably good preservation given that she was built all the way back in 1843 and is one of the oldest museum ships in existence. Number 2. The SS United States While this one is technically not a museum ship, she was still a classical ocean liner still in existence today. Like the QE2, I'm not going to be going into too much detail about the SS United States because I talk more about her in my Top 10 Ocean Lives video. Make sure to go check that out after this video. The SS United States is famous for, for being the ship that stole the blue ribbon from the RMS Queen Mary after 14 years, crossing the Atlantic in 3 days, 10 hours, 40 minutes. The SS United States still holds the blue ribbon today, as one of only a few classical ocean liners still in existence today. We're just going to be talking about her retirement rather than her entire career. During her early years of transatlantic service, the SS United States was a popular ship to travel on, and in 1962, she was featured in the film Bon Voyage. But as the new jet air travel was taking over the transatlantic ocean trade, the number of passengers who wanted to sail in the SS United States or other liners was decreasing. Because of this, Cunard's RMS Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth were retired from service. In November of 1969, the SS United States sailed on her 400th voyage, which would be, on, which would be her last voyage. At the end of 1969, the United States line said that the United States would offer a 55-day cruise across the Pacific that was to start on January 21, 1970, but was later canceled. In early 1970, the ship was pr uh, brought to Newport News for an overhaul. It was then and that the United States line said that the vessel was going to be withdrawn from service. In 1976, the Norwegian cruise line said that they were interested in purchasing the SS United States and converting her into a troop ship but they purchased the SS France instead. In 1996, she was towed to Philadelphia, and in 1999, the United States Conservancy was created in efforts to restore the ship. And that's where she is today. The fastest ocean liner in the world sits quietly and peacefully at Pier 88 in Philadelphia. Number 1. The RMS Queen Mary The, R the Queen of the Seas, which most of you know of that I don't give too much detail about. Of course, we know at the beginning of her career, she rattled... Uh, the French liner SS Normandy was placed on a bounty by Adolf Hitler for anyone that could sink Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth. And she continued to do transatlantic crossings until the 1960s, when just like the SS United States, she was struggling to attract passengers because of the new jet air travel. In 1967, the Queen Mary made her 1,000th voyage from Southampton to Long Beach, California, where she was retired and converted into a floating hotel. In 2020, shortly after COVID hit, they found that the ship was in desperate need of repairs. But at the time of recording this video, the Queen Mary is open for tours only, and the entire ship will, re will reopen in early spring, and will once again operate as a floating hotel. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you think that if there's any museum ships that I've missed and you think I should probably do a part 2 for this video. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like to support my channel, feel free to sign up for the Top Impressive Patreon where you will get early access to videos as well as behind the scenes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.